This is the Tabs Map Creator tutorial. Check out the timestamps below so you can skip around the video. Now, based on a community poll we did last week, this Tabs Map Creator tutorial is going to be focused on recreating Medieval 1. I'm going to show you everything you need to know in the new Tabs Map Creator. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some of the most important tips and tricks to help you make better Tabs Maps. Right. Let's begin. Section one, the basics. The first thing you need to do is head over to the map creator and this is where you'll find all of your recent maps. Over here, you can upload your maps to the workshop, but in this tutorial, we're creating a new map. So click this and now you've got six themes to choose from. We've got medieval, dynasty, pirate, Renaissance, Tribal, and Viking. And below that, you'll see each of these themes has got a different template you can pick. Now we're gonna select Medieval, and whilst the map we're recreating is probably a small template, we're gonna go for the big one. Now, create your map. Straight away, you're gonna see a massive blank canvas that you need to paint. But before we do any of that, by looking at the top left and pressing tab, it brings up a menu. Now here, you will see Z and Y, which will allow you to undo or redo anything you place. I'd also recommend saving your map regularly, but most importantly, in map settings, you can change the water height of your map and you can also change the weather. Now I'd recommend doing this first before you do anything else. So I'm gonna select Windy and it's useful to know that if at any point you want to change your theme, you can do that in here at any point in the map creation. Of course, we're gonna keep it on Medieval and then by pressing tab, we'll get back to the map. Basic navigation is control to move down, space to move up, and shift to move faster. Once again, looking at the top left, if you press P, it will load your map. And at this point, you can test your map. And just as easily as that, you can see how well it works. Now, if you want to get back to your map, come over to the right hand side. And there we go. Just like that, you're back to your build. Section two tool summary. In this section, I'm going to do a brief overview of the bottom left tools. Of course, we will be going into more detail later, but this is a quick rundown of how they work. So number one is your place tool, and by pressing B, it will open a big menu with a bunch of different buildings. These objects have subcategories which you can scroll through to find what you want. For example, we could place a rock, and just like that, we've got the first object on the map. Now, tool number Number two is called the utility tool, and this allows us to easily duplicate items. Looking at the rock that we have just put down, if I left click with this tool down here, and then I move to the side, you'll see I can drag another template. And then by left clicking again, just like that, we've made ourselves a wall. The other tool allows us to paint an area, and once they're all green, you know you have them selected, and then by pressing V, we can now select the entire formation and move them around together. Once again, if we look over here, we've got Y and Z to redo and undo. Because I don't want these rocks on the map, I can press Z and you'll see it'll move them and then delete them. And again, by pressing Y, it will redo all of that. Now, section number three is Sculpt. This allows us to place material like this, or by going down and right-clicking, we can remove material. The middle mouse button is also a smoothing functionality, which allows us to smooth out the objects we've placed. There's a selection of different shapes that you can place, and by pressing R and playing around with the settings, you can change the features of the object that you're using. By pressing E at the bottom right, you can seamlessly fly through objects, and by pressing V, it will save the height of your arrow. Otherwise, where you're aiming will move up and down as you look at terrain. Again, with V and E, it's going to allow you to pass directly through it. And finally, we have got Mayhem. This is a collection of tools which allows you to impact the map and basically create create interesting objects, for example, spawning a giant volcano. Of course, we're gonna undo everything that we just did and start afresh as we move on to the next section. Section three, sculpting. The sculpting tool is the most important tool for building terrain, and you'll see we've got a bunch of shapes down here. Once again, left-clicking adds material, right-clicking removes it, and the middle mouse button will smooth it out. But by pressing R on the right-hand side, we get this menu, which allows us to 
basically turn any shape however we want, which allows us to remove smooth material. Or if we move over here and once again press R, this slider will affect how rough the material is. A good example of that is if we turn this back to being a pole and we place the material, you'll see it's got jaggedy edges. But as we smooth the material out and place it again, you'll see it's going to be a lot more uniform. This slider down here determines the size of the object you're placing, like so. And again, if we want a bigger, rougher object, we can do the both of them as well. Now, this bottom one determines the rate of flow of the object you're placing. So with this right the way down at the bottom, you'll see that it's going to slowly create the object. But with it all the way at the top, with the click of a single button, it's going to place the entire thing. Now, just for an example, we can use this to create a long wall. And if you look where I'm aiming, notice how it moves height depending on what you're aiming at. Now that can be quite annoying if you're trying to get a consistent height. But you'll notice if we press V and then we move into it, it's going to stop at the wall. And it's again going to place a consistent height material. But you'll also notice that it's unable to go through the wall. So by pressing E, we can now travel seamlessly without any collision. Now, because we're recreating Medieval 2, we've put the water level quite low because we want a big cliff. But you'll notice it's not actually touching the island. So let's press tab, come down to map settings and make sure that the water height is just enough. Now if we want bigger cliffs, one way that we can do that is by simply building them up. But again, we probably want to press V before we do anything so that we will get a consistent height. There we go, we've accidentally made a coliseum, but what we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of the middle. By pressing E, it's going to allow us to clip through the walls to help us fill the area. Now by holding shift, it's going to speed you up in the process. Now I'm sure you'll agree this looks absolutely horrible on top. So let's unpress E and V and then let's use the middle mouse button to help smooth everything out. Now a critical part of sculpting terrain is actually by coming down to number four, which is mayhem. A lot of these tools are actually really good for creating compelling and natural looking land. For example, this thunderbolt, when you left click is going to create a big chasm and when you right click will make a small one. Similarly, if we do some earth bending with a left click, we can destroy that much and with a right click, we can destroy a lot. Now the meteor strikes, we can either go for a single meteor strike or we can go really full send and just destroy the map. We've also got a volcano and all of these tools down here are really good ways of carving the map in a slightly easier and more natural way than the sculpting tool. Okay, so at this point, we're relatively happy with the shape of the map that we've gone for. So let's move on to the next section. Section four, the place tool. In the bottom left corner, you will see place. And by scrolling with the mouse wheel, you'll see a bunch of objects. Once you've found one you like, you can press E and it will spawn in a massive object. So if we left click using this object, it's gonna place it. And by right clicking on that object, you can also get rid of it. But maybe it's just in the wrong place. Well, by pressing the middle middle mouse button, you can move it around. And if you want to rotate it by left clicking and pressing E or by pressing Q, you can rotate it whichever direction you want. Now by default, it will spawn in the middle of the terrain you're looking at, but in the bottom right corner, you will see V. By clicking that button and then scrolling your mouse forward and backward, it's going to allow you to select a height. Once you're happy, left click and it will go where you told it to. Now by holding left shift and then pressing Q and E, you can then change the size of the object you're holding and once again, press left click once you're happy. Now, once you're hovering over the object, imagine you want to place multiple. Well, simply left click it and hold the left shift and place as many of these objects as you want to. Then when you're done, right click to get rid of it. Inside the B menu, you'll notice there's a bunch of buildings, a bunch of landscaping tools and props. And by using these objects creatively, you can create just about anything that you want. Section number five, the utility tool. In the bottom left corner, you'll see the utility tool has only got two different features. The left hand feature currently selected allows you to left click on the map and you'll see as we drag this, it's gonna paint all these objects. The ones highlighted in green are the objects that you have painted successfully. Now at the bottom left corner, you will see there is an option for V. So if we press V, it's gonna allow us to select and drag all of our objects. So say we didn't want them here, say we wanted them on the other side, it's going to allow us to relocate the whole lot of them. And whilst we 
have them selected, we can also rotate them like this. Now, you see this glowing area in the center? On the right-hand side, there is a scroller, which, once again, if you look at the area selecting, it will allow you to paint a much bigger area, selecting more things more quickly. Now, instead of left-clicking to move these, if we press E, it's gonna allow us to make a copy of the entire selection. Once again, we can rotate this copy, or we can just place it. Now, the other tool allows us to make a selection and duplicate these items in a different way. By selecting an item you want to duplicate and dragging your mouse out, you'll see it will copy as many of these objects as you want. Now, by pressing Q, it's gonna decrease the spacing between them, and by pressing E, it's going to increase the spacing between them. By holding Shift and pressing Q, we can rotate the entire selection, and again, E will do it in the other way. Finally, we just press left click once we're happy with the selection. Now, with this tool, by pressing V in the bottom corner, you can see it's going to snap our rocks into one of four directions, which is useful if you're trying to get a consistent straight line. And I think that's about it for that tool. Section number six, the mayhem tool. In the bottom left corner, you'll see we have a wide selection of different tools. Now, I'm going to start with tool number two, which allows me to place trees by left clicking. By right clicking, we can remove those trees. And again, if you look at the area that is selected, if we press R, you can change the size of that area. If you press E, it's going to bring a selection up, which allows you to pick which trees you want. So if you just want grass, that's the way to do it. Which brings us nicely onto tool number one, which is the burn tool. Once again, we can increase the size of the burn radius. And then by left clicking, we can burn away the trees. Now, if we press V in the bottom right corner, it's going to not just burn the trees. It's going it's to burn absolutely everything. So there you go. That's what we've made so far. But I'm sure you'll agree everything looks just a little bit boring and flat. One way you can solve that is with the next tool. Depending on the theme that you've gone for, it will paint different colors. By left clicking, you'll get a kind of cliffside aesthetic, which is kind of good for going around the edges where you kind of want it to look quite rocky. The middle click will provide you with a slightly more sandy kind of texture. And then by right clicking, it will give you the base texture. But you might want to actually reduce the flow rate, which means it will actually go down considerably slower. And also you can change the size of the area. Once again, I kind of showed you earlier, but this can be a really effective tool just for mixing up the terrain a little bit. If you left click on the terrain like this and you just sporadically put a bunch of these down, I know this probably looks insane right now because you never want your map to be completely flat. Again, if you want to get a little bit more texture on the side of your cliffs, you can use this tool here and you can kind of just go round your cliffs like this. And these mayhem tools, again, you almost always want to use them with the sculpting tool, which means we come back over here and then by pressing the middle mouse button, again, you'll see it's just gonna make the land a little bit more interesting. It doesn't have to be totally extreme, but it's just a good way of just texturing the land, making it look less dull. And you see what I've done there? The exact same thing can, of course, be done with the meteor strikes like that or when you right click the meteor strike something like that in fact this might actually be a better tool than the other one now back to the mayhem tool i i can't imagine many times when you're gonna want to use the volcano but i guess it's just like a good way of just getting a little hill that you can kind of use just to get a little bit more interesting terrain out of it now this next tool is rain which i believe it's just gonna slowly chisel away at the terrain and just create some sort of dips and recessions and stuff which is just gonna make things look a little bit more natural now the next Next tool is a balloon tool, which if you want to delete things with style, you can fire a balloon at objects and it will just yeet them to the sky. Alternatively, you can use the magnet tool. By left clicking with a magnet tool, it's going to spread everything out. And by right clicking with a magnet tool, it's going to pull it all together. Now you might look at that and think that doesn't really make much of a difference. But what you can do is you can right click like this. And then once again, if we come back to utility and then we paint a selection by pressing V and then E, it's going to allow us to copy that selection. So that's a good way of creating really dense vegetation where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Now, lastly, we have got this sunshine thingy. If I hold this down and I move my mouse around, you'll see it's going to change the position of the sun in the sky. So if you want it to be nighttime, you can pull this all the way down to the bottom. And then if you want it to be day again, you pull it back up to the top and there you go. You'll see your sun in the sky. And by pressing R and then sliding 
bring this along, you can change the saturation and the exposure. Now, when I was recording this video, I forgot to cover the effects and the triggers. So we're gonna do it now on a fresh map. When we're in the place tool and we press B, on the far right hand side, we have got tools and we've also got visual effects. Now, in the tools, we've got a bunch of different dispensers we can place, which we can stick down in a nice row like that. And we've also got three triggers, the trigger, the repeater, and the sequencer. By selecting repeater, we get this weird looking shape here. Now, we can actually just hide that at the back of the map out of sight, and we can also make it even smaller. And by pressing Q and E, you'll see the timer will actually change. Now, to link this to our cannons, I left click it, and you'll see I get these arrows. So, I simply drag it over here and left click again. So, when we hover over this cannon, we get nothing. When we hover over this cannon, we get nothing. But this one has remembered its order. As you can see, we've got a boatload of different effects and there's even a range of different dispensers, spawners and triggers. For example, we could spawn ourselves a ballista and if we come over to the utility tool, I left click the ballista and I drag it, yep, that's a lot of ballistas. So I'm gonna select the sequencer, now I'm gonna press R on the sequencer, left click and I'm going to link it to this and what I'm doing here by the way is I'm holding shift which allows you to link one trigger to multiple objects and so as you can see we have gotten 19 ballistas linked to this sequencer. So let's test out the ballistas and see if anyone can hit a shot. Come on fellas, oh oh my god, I think they're actually gonna start killing them. They're not the most accurate thing on the planet, I'll be honest. Now remember, because that is a static def- oh my god, wow. Because it is a static defense, it's not actually gonna be attacked by the enemy like a traditional ballista would. So to demonstrate the triggers and the effects, we've got three ballistas by fire ballistas and and five magic missiles and they're linked up to three sequencers. So if I press R, you'll see this one has selected three ballistas. This one has selected the five, well, you can just see all the selections. Now you'll also see an effect that we have down here. If you look closely, you'll also see a trigger. So when a unit walks over that, they should explode or at least the effect will happen. I think we're ready to press P at the top left and place our dummy units so that we can put the map to the test. Okay, do all of these work. Okay, yes, why? Oh, I've, I've, I've put them facing the wrong direction, it would seem. Yeah, the ballistas are operational. The fire ballistas are also operational, and I missed the effect. There we go. The effect is occurring as the units walk over them. Now, uh, so far, these haven't killed- well, they haven't killed anyone. Wow. That was wildly underwhelming. A word of warning, as I come back into this menu and I show you the cannonball and the bomb dispenser, for some reason, these are not working with the triggers at the minute. I'm sure they will do at some point. Now remember, we were gonna recreate Medieval 1, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed run this build, and then I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks at the end.
Okay, here we go. This is what I have made. The idea of the map is that you would have the peasants on the left-hand side and the medieval knights on the right. Now, one little tip is if you're ever trying to make a path, I would recommend using the middle button to do it and then make sure the outside of it, like the bits that aren't the path, are the natural terrain color and then you also populate it with grass. That helps to kind of clearly define the areas that are supposed to be a path so you can see they're supposed to walk around here through the gate past the signpost and up towards the castle. Now another tip to be aware of is definitely do not have your surfaces being too smooth. If your surfaces are really smooth like this, it's just gonna look really like, I don't know, plain and boring. So how to avoid that? Press R on the right hand side, slide the coarseness up to the top and the flow down to the bottom and then you can actually just come and right click on your sides and that will kind of just slowly chisel away some materials and make things look a little bit less uniform. And Another thing to avoid is having big empty areas like this. So head on over to Mayhem, select yourself some grass and just plonk it down. If you want to go one step further, you can also stick down a couple of very cheeky trees and that's just going to help divide the map up slightly and just make it look a little bit more compelling. Now I'm sure this next tip is going to be pretty obvious, but don't be that guy that leaves floaters on your map. Open up your sculpt tool and get rid of it. Look at this one down here, there's a little baby floater in the sky. We gotta get rid of it. Did I get him? I think I got it. And another top tip is to make sure you've got themed areas. So you see over here, I've got my kind of farmer huts. I've got what is actually, you know, a farm. And then we've got a couple of bits around it. Just little bits of detail like the fence, which just helps split the map up and make it more interesting. Now at this point, it's incredibly important to make sure you save your build. So I'll save this as Plastic Scott Medieval Tutorial Build and let's select a cheeky little thumbnail. So I'm going to save this and when the update comes out, I will upload this to the workshop so that you can download it. There we go. Okay, map saved. Now that we've saved your map with a name and a thumbnail, we need to back out to the main menu. So once you're back in the main menu, you can now come to Map Creator over here and you'll see a list of all of the maps that you have made. Now, if we wanted to upload to the Steam Workshop, you come over to Load Map, you then select the map you just made. This is my World War One trench map, and this is my D-Day map, but this is the one we just made. So we'll select that, and then we'll come to Upload over here. We then want to upload new, unless you're doing an update, and we will... Okay, no, we will crash. Because I'm playing an early access version, whenever you try to upload it, I think it just dies. So instead, I shall show you you two of the maps I have already made. This is map number one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be showing you this build and the gameplay sometime later today. And then this one is yet another map which I created. This is a World War II D-Day map and the video for this will also be coming out soon. So if you found that tutorial useful, make sure you subscribe for more tabs gameplay. And yes, very fitting, it did just crash. Although conveniently, I can show you a bunch of my tabs totally accurate battle simulator videos that you should go and watch. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, join my discord and keep your eyes peeled for more tabs map creator videos.